Hi, it's Rob. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to build a three-tier web app using multiple containers, build and push images to Docker Hub, then deploy the application using a Docker Compose file. The front end of the app will be a simple web page served in a container running Nginx. The app layer will be hosted in a container running Node.js, and the database will be a container running MongoDB. I'll also spin up a Mongo Express container to manage the database after it's created. We'll create a volume to persist the Mongo data and a bridge network for the app to run in. Then ultimately, we'll build the images from Docker files, push them to Docker Hub, then deploy the app using a Docker Compose file. So if you're ready, let's jump in. For my development environment, I'm on a Mac and I'm using Docker Desktop for Mac. And here we can see I have no containers, images, or volumes currently created. And at this time, I don't have any custom networks created. Now, since I want my application's containers to all run on the same network, I'm going to create a new network named App Network, which will use the bridge driver. And now we see I have my App Network. As we saw earlier, I don't yet have any images on my machine. But since I'll be using Mongo for the database, I'll pull the image from Docker Hub. And since I'll be using Mongo Express to configure the database, I'll go ahead and pull this image as well. Now with both images pulled, I could go ahead and spin up the Docker containers. For the Mongo container, I'll want to run this in detached mode. And I'll map the container on the default port 27,017. If we jump back into the Mongo documentation and scroll down, here we see an example where they're passing the init root username and init root password in as environment variables. So I'll pass the init root username in as an environment variable and the password. I'll specify that I want this container to run on the app network. I'll give it a name of Mongo and use the Mongo image. And here we see we have the container named Mongo with the exposed port. And if I check the Mongo logs, we'll see that the Mongo init process is complete and it's ready for startup. And down here, we see that the database is waiting for connections. Now I'll go ahead and create the container for Mongo Express, which I also want to run in detached mode. This will be exposed on port 8081. And if we jump back to the Mongo Express docs and scroll down, we'll see the configuration details. And what I want to pass in as environment variables is the admin username, admin password, and the server. So here I'll set the environment variable for the admin username, the password, and the server, matching the username, password, and server that I specified when I created the Mongo container. Again, I want this to run on the app network. I'll give it a name of Mongo Express and specify the image. And now we have our Mongo Express container running on port 8081. And we can verify that by checking the Mongo Express logs. And if I load localhost 8081 in the browser, we see the Mongo Express console. So from here, I'll go ahead and create the contacts database and a contacts collection. I'll go ahead and add a new document, which we can see is added here. Now let's turn our attention to the Node.js app server. In the app server source folder, I have a package.json file, which includes the Express and MongoDB dependencies. And it specifies the main app as the server.js file. In the server.js file, I'm requiring the MongoDB package and then creating a constant which is the URL to the Mongo database running on port 27,017. I specified the username and password for demo purposes only. When there's a GET request to the root of the application, 
the MongoDB client will connect to the database. Then I'll set the database on the client, go to the collections, look for the contacts collection, and do a find all, and then ultimately return the response. And in the folder that has the Docker file, I'll go ahead and build the image, giving it a tag of app server. And we see the app server image. Now I could go ahead and use the image to spin up an instance of the container. So I want the container to run in detached mode. The app will run on port 3000. I'll put it in the app network, give it a name and specify the image. And now we see a running instance of the app server exposed on port 3000. And if I do a Docker logs on the app server, we'll see the console.log output indicating the server's running on port 3000. And if you jump in the browser and hit localhost port 3000, we see that our document is returned. Now, this is great, but if I jump back in the terminal and I stop Mongo, in Mongo Express, then remove the stop containers and restart them. If I jump back in the browser and refresh Mongo Express, we see that the contacts database is gone. Now, in order to persist the data for the database, I want to create a shared volume for my application. So I'll jump back into the terminal and create a new volume named app volume. And now we see the new volume. Now I need to stop the Mongo and Mongo Express containers and restart them, passing in the volume that I just created. So to restart the Mongo container, this time I'll pass in a mount which source points to the app volume that I just created. And the target will be the slash data slash DB folder in the container. And since the data is only persisted in the Mongo container, I actually didn't need to stop Mongo Express. So I don't need to pass the mount in here. I'll just restart the container. Now, if we jump back over to the browser, I'll go ahead and create the database and the collection. And I'll go ahead and add a few documents. And we see the documents here. So let me jump over to a new tab and just test this in the app. And we see our data is returned. So now what I'm going to do is stop the Mongo container. Then restart it, passing the mount in again. Jump back over to the browser, refresh and we see our data has been persisted. Just reload the app again, and we see our data is still there. Now, with the database container up and running and the database built, and with the app server able to connect to the database, we can turn our attention to the front end, which will be a single HTML page hosted on an Nginx server. Now, the website isn't anything fancy. It just shows a list of contacts, which is the data that's in the database. And when you click to show cell text, it shows the cell number. So this unordered list is dynamically populated from the JavaScript, which uses jQuery to get the JSON at localhost 3000, which is the port that's open on the app server. It then takes the results and passes it to the process data function, which will display the list on the page. Taking a look at the Docker file, its base comes from an Nginx image. And then I copy all the files in the source folder to the Nginx HTML folder. So now I'll jump into the terminal and in the web server folder, I'll build the Docker file into an image and give it a tag of web server. Then I'll run the container detached, exposing port 80 on the app network. And here's our web server on port 80. So now if I jump back into the browser and refresh the page, we see our contents displayed. And if we jump down into the network tab and click on local host, this is the HTTP GET request to localhost 3000, which is our app server. And if we preview the response, we'll see our data. 
Now, if we jump back over to the terminal and I stop Mongo and go back to the browser and reload localhost 3000, we'll see the page is clocking because the app server can't connect to the database. And if I stop the app server and go back to the browser and refresh the web server, we'll see that the request to localhost failed because the app server is no longer running. And finally, if I stop the web server, then reload the page, we see that the site can't be reached because of the web server container is stopped. All right, so things are looking pretty good right now. But what I want to do is a little bit of cleanup here. So the containers are already stopped, but I'm going to go ahead and remove them. And I'm going to go ahead and remove the images as well. All right, so now everything's cleaned up. And the reason I did that is, even though it's great that we can build an image for our app server and then spin up a container on the command line and do the same for the web server, we don't want to have to manually do this every time we want to run our application. So instead of issuing commands to build the images and then using the Docker files to create the containers, I'm going to use a Docker Compose file. And actually, before we take a look at the Docker Compose, I wanted to jump back in the terminal and delete the app network and the app volume. Okay, so back in VS Code, I've opened up the Docker Compose YAML file, and it has three sections, services, volumes, and networks. So starting with networks, here I'm declaring a network named app network, giving it the name, and it's using the bridge driver. In volumes, I'm declaring the app volume. Now in services, I have services for the app server, the web server, Mongo, and Mongo Express. Looking at Mongo Express, the image will come from Mongo Express. I'm giving it the name of Mongo Express, exposing the ports, and putting it on the app network. I'm also passing in the environment variables for the username, password, and the server. For Mongo, the image is coming from Mongo. The container name will be Mongo. I'm exposing the ports 27,017 and setting the environment variables. I'm putting it on the app network and mounting the volume. For the web server, this is going to use an image which will come from my Docker Hub repository. So I'll need to build this image and push it to Docker Hub with the tag of version 1.0. The container name will be web server, exposed on port 80, on the app network. And finally, for the app server, this will also need to have the image built and push to Docker Hub. The container name will be app server. It'll expose port 3000 and run on the app network. So right now, if I log into Docker Hub and click on repositories, we'll see I don't yet have any repositories pushed to the hub. So I'm going to jump into the terminal, do a Docker login, enter my username, and password, and now I'm authenticated. So here I'm going to change directory into the app server and build the image using the Docker file and tagging it by specifying my Docker Hub username with a version of 1.0. And now I can push it to Docker Hub. And if we jump back into Docker Hub and refresh, now we see the uploaded image. So I'll go back to the terminal, change into the web server folder, build the image, and then push it. And now both images are up on Docker Hub. Now, before I run the Docker Compose, I'm going to go ahead and remove these two local images and just verify. Now, in the folder that has the Docker Compose YAML file, I'll execute Docker Compose pointing to the YAML file and specifying up.
Now I'm going to jump into a new terminal, list the Docker networks, and we see our app networks created, list the volumes, and we see our demo app volume, and list the running containers. And we see Mongo Express on 8081, Mongo on 27017, the app server on 3000, and the web server on 80. So I'll jump into Mongo Express and create the database, then the collection, and I'll add the documents. And we see them here. So now I'll jump in a new tab, hit localhost 3000, and we see we have our data. So finally, I'll launch a new tab and jump into the front end. And we see our list of contacts from localhost, which was a get request, to 3000, and the response has our data. So that concludes this demo on building a three-tier web app using Docker files, Docker Compose, and pushing the images to Docker Hub. If you found this interesting, feel free to give it a like. And if you'd like to be notified when I release new content, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.